What's up, everyone? Thralls of Metal back again. I am Shredlord. And Krog Nick. And we are here to bring you an album review. And today's review is Grim and True with Craven Idol's Forked Tongues. So this also comes out on the 23rd of July on Dark Descent Records. This band formed in 2005 in London, England. This is their third full length, and these guys play a really raw sounding blend of black metal and thrash metal and naturally when you combine two genres I love like that I'm already interested in the end result and having listened to their previous album which I liked I was already interested in this one and going through this album I see this as a step forward this is pretty much the most raw aspects of both of those genres combined but with hooks melody and killer songwriting. I have absolutely never heard of these gentlemen before, but listening to them, the first thing I can say is, hello, governor. I liked this a lot. Starting off with Venomous Rites, this is a little, well, I shouldn't say a little, this is a lot of just straightforward and aggressive. This is a very no frills, no bullshit kind of song. And that vibe kind of carries in the first two tracks, really. The first two tracks are kind of more or less uh, no bullshit. With the exception of the intro for the track, The Wrath of Typhon, yeah. or Typhon, or... Something like that. Yeah. The intro is Black and Iron Maiden yes. sounding, which I thought was very, very cool. But aside from that, it's once again back to the just very no bullshit aggressive approach. These guys, when it comes down to like the thrashy side, it's very much in like that realm of like early Slayer, uh, Sodom as well. But when it comes down to the black metal style they use, that is more far reaching, I think. You have epic sort of melodies oh. and such, very akin to bands like Immortal and Emperor. You have the raw D beat stuff on even the demons, which, holy shit, that has Dark Throne written all over it. The very punky and angry and snarling, and then you couple that with the thrash aspects, you have a nice rager. That song is actually a turning point in the entire album, oh, really. I, I love that song. But you know, that was that was kinda cool when I heard that, I heard like this change in there. And then you get towards the back half and you get the atmospheric stuff. Very mayhem and, you know, unholy trinity era Dark Throne. This is Again, wide-reaching when it comes down to at least one side of the fusion, but the other side, still really good, and that's the side that I think packs the aggressive punch, which is all over this album. Yeah, there's only, what, seven tracks total, but my god, they are powerful tracks. And I think part of the power comes from the fact that, for the most part, they're all pretty short, so they did a very good job of not repeating anything or tiring us out with certain parts that some black metal music can do. So they kept it short, and I think that helped keep it interesting. With the exception of the last two tracks being seven plus minutes, that's where they really opened up the floodgates oh, and, yeah. and let the creativity shine. These songs are, are masterpieces, man. They're really, really good. And what's cool to me is they're not two masterpieces or two really creative songs that sound the same. Yeah. It's almost like... This song is a couple pieces of the puzzle, while the last song is a couple different pieces of the puzzle put together. And it, it's a great contrast to end the album with. And melody-wise, very unique. Of course, we already brought up, you get the, you know, very traditional classic heavy metal, you know, melodies and such in Wrath of Typhon. But you also get Middle Eastern melodies in there, too. Wrath of Typhon, Four Tongues, the title track, and Deify the Storm God all bring in fierce Middle Eastern melodies, and it's one of those you know them when you hear them. Very akin to a band like Melakesh, which pretty much perfected that art. Very interesting just in terms of the different kinds of melodies in here. Like, these guys can shift from raw and furious to, wow, that is surprisingly melodic and catchy. Though, the vocals might not be for everyone, I love them. I think he has that kind of perfect balance between like thrash and black metal delivery. And all the extra stuff you get in there too, like howls in the distance. Yeah, there's even there's sound effects and every genre they use, they kind of opened up everything and, and took a little bit in here and it was it was really interesting. And they're even not opposed to a breakdown or two. There's a breakdown in the latter half of the title track, which just brings just a mosh pit groove. I mean, most of this is very high energy. Like the slowest pace you hear up to that point is kind of like that, you know, black and war march where it's kind of like a slow gallop into battle. 
Rest time, blast beats, D beats, furious thrash beats. This album is like full tilt boogie pretty much the entire time, but it slows down at appropriate spots or even cuts out and builds the song back up in appropriate parts. So good uses of dynamics there. In fact, you don't even really hear a clean guitar until the very last track, which is The Gods Have Left Us For Dead. Agreed. And <laughs> whether you agree or not, this is... The intro is the first time you hear any semblance of clean guitar, or this definitely is the slowest tempo that they've gone this entire album. However, with that being said, no matter what tempo they decide to go, whether it's full on blast beat mode or vibing an epic, the production really was awesome. It was able to maintain the rawness of an analog of a lot of the instruments, I feel like. Yeah. And it wasn't overproduced. So. It let it breathe, and that was really apparent. And it's it's imperative for me to do good production in black metal for reasons such as blast beats are the, yeah. the, the number one reason. When you have an awesome blast beat section going on, you need to hear the guitars, you need to hear the bass and the other things going on. So I understand there is a sector of black metal that does not believe in the good values of productions, and that and that's okay but the good production on this album does nothing but help it kick ass that much harder. And it keeps the rawness. That's that's the important part. It's mixed well. Everything's separated so, again, each thing can breathe, but you still don't lose, like, the reverby edge and the vocals and guitars. The guitars. The guitars sound great. They drive this album a lot. Even when the blast beats are going, you hear the guitars enough to keep that melody and to keep that groove going. You never lose that. Um, the production never screws you over on that. The other thing is, is you get some small leads here every yeah. once in a while, too. Nothing like a traditional lead, but there's sections where he's doing a wide interval kind of tremolo picking. There's short melodies. There's dive bombs. Enough to make it really interesting and to add another small layer or, uh, you know, another wrinkle to the fold, so to speak. It did nothing but enhance uh, these tracks as well. It was never overdone no, by no. It, by any means. And good harmonies, too. Like, just a classic little lead harmony. And surprisingly, a dynamic they kind of saved for the last two tracks, which that makes up almost 20 minutes of this album, or the last two tracks. They bring in clean vocals. Kind of clean. They're more like chants. Yeah. But like that, that Viking chant thing, like, you know, early in Slave sort of stuff. It really added a lot. I think it kind of gave it a total mood shift. In fact, I think the biggest mood shift is the last track because that brings in almost entirely black metal. That song is almost 100% black metal. All the thrash elements sort of take a bit of a backseat. There's a little bit in there, but most of that song is just cold and grim and all the appropriate black metal adjectives, of course. But I don't know. I, I liked how varied this was. That was the thing that kept drawing me in because every track was different and it really was like a great paced album. Like the more you listen to it, the more you got into it and it had very different songs. They didn't pack anything back to back that was too similar. So props to that as well. Now overall, it would be very hard for me to be more pleased with this album as a fan of black metal and as a fan of thrash metal and as a fan of death metal. There are so many different things to keep me interested, and they did a great job of being creative and crafting these songs. I give this a four and a half out of five all day. If you are a fan of any of these genres, I would highly recommend that you give this a listen because if you have a halfway decent ear, I don't understand how you could not like this <laughs> album. It is really good. This album has made me a fan of these dudes, no doubt. Can't wait to hear what they come up with next. I got to agree, four and a half. I didn't necessarily have the highest expectations. I liked their last album. I thought it was good. This surpasses it by a long shot. Great dynamics, great songwriting. I love the variety in terms of styles of black metal alone on here. Like the thrash metal aspects are great. They give it a great energy. But all the different ways to approach black metal in there, I think really enhance this. Great songwriting. Very different tracks. I mean, this one is a real journey of an album. Like, listen to this thing all the way through. You're going to get a lot of cool stuff along the way. It is energetic. It's raw. I would say this is more geared towards black metal, but there's tons of thrash riffs on here. So if you're a big thrash fan, you're going to find a ton of stuff you love on here as well. Strongly recommend getting this one. I'm probably going to order it not too long after this video is over. 
And uh, yeah, I'll probably look for uh, whatever other one I'm missing by them because the span fucking rules and you should check them out. So, because Necrotic and I have to go burn down a cigarette, <laughs> we're going to leave you now. Thank you for watching. If you've liked this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you're not subscribed to us, we would greatly appreciate it. Plus, it notifies you of when we release awesome content, which we do pretty much all the time. Also, your favorite lovable metalheads are on Patreon. There is a link down below, and if you would like to support us, we would greatly appreciate that as well. Also, we have our new threads, our Thralls of Metal shirts. We would like to get you into them. If you want a shirt and you haven't gotten a shirt and you are thinking to yourself, how do I get a shirt? I am going to tell you. Go ahead and send a email to thrallsofmetal at gmail.com with the title line shirts in large caps and we will get you an invoice sent out. So on behalf of Necrotic, myself and the rest of the thralls, we will bid you adieu and stay fucking true and kelp.